sugar craft is an art where sugar is used as a medium to express emotion, thought, and concept. An artistic baker can combine sugar paste, fondant, pastelage, and colors to create mind-blowing designs. Such creative masterpieces can give a lasting impression of the culinary art at any special occasion. You're welcome to Baker's World on the network service of the NTA. I am Funke Oyeyele. Glad to know you're watching. On the show today, we'll be showcasing how to use sugar paste to create a unique design. Our guest is an artistic cake design who sees cake decoration as a medium of expressing an innate ability. You'll get to know more about her in our conversation segment. Also, a complimentary segment, Baker's Gist, is on the lineup. You just get set to learn and be inspired. We'll be right back. Baking cakes is fun to a lot of people, but preparing a walkable fondant may be a challenge. On this segment today, our guest baker Grace Adachi and assistant will be showing us how to prepare a stretchy and workable fondant that will be used to decorate our already baked cake. Let's kickstart the show as I hand over to our baker now. Please don't go anywhere. to prepare the fondant, I will quickly put in my ice cream sugar, 500 grams by cent. I'm making a kg. All dry ingredients will go to be precise. I will have to put my CMC and Tylos. Stay it a bit, just to incorporate the two of them. I'm going to glue my gelatin, so I'll have to add gelatin. I'll put water first, see two minutes of water to get inside, and then my gelatin. What I'm doing now, I'm gluing the gelatin, gelatin over hot water, not boiling water. I'm going to stir it a bit, you stir it till there are no granules left, and then you can now put in your glucose. You can see. So I'm putting in my vegetable shortening. Just a little bit, then allow it totally melt. You can see the vegetable shortening. I just want it to dissolve a bit, not entirely. I'm going to make a hole in my dry ingredient. I'll put the wet ingredient, stir it a bit, then transfer it to my platform, and then melt. The idea behind using the mixer is just to reduce the tedious process of nerving and nerving, and sometimes it helps introduce elasticity. For fondant. For this, you need and pull, pull it to introduce elasticity so that you don't have your fondant breaking while you're working. Now this is my fondant test. You make it into a smooth round ball. Drop the fondant. The ball should not collapse. Okay. Our fondant is set. We store it in a plastic bag. 
Don't keep it out so it doesn't dry out and crack. So you keep it in an airtight container. You can have it for as long as you want to. So let's see if it's the very fast. While we leave our fondant to rest for a while, we'll get to the conversation room where we'll get to have a chat with our guest speaker. That will be after the short break. We'll be right back. I've always loved art. And I know art is expressed in different ways. I've always loved to, to put things together. I remember growing up, my mom would say, if I come back, her room, the, the design in her room will change. I... Grace Onyeche Edache was born in Makudi, Benue State, to the family of Mr. and Mrs. Gabriel Onu. She is from Ohimini local government area in Benue State. She had her primary education at Makudi International School, after which Grace proceeded to Federal Government Girls College for her secondary education. Grace Edache is a geography and planning graduate from the University of Jos Plateau State. Our intelligent and amiable guest was the best female graduating student from the Faculty of Environmental Sciences in 2005. Though a gifted student, Grace had an unexplainable passion for baking, art, and sugar crafting, which made her enroll at a baking school in Makudi after graduating. Being a fearless learner, Grace attended various international sugar craft training sessions to upskill her skill. She is the creative director of Grace Oven Bake Shop and has countless masterpieces to her credit. She is happily married and blessed with two beautiful daughters. Come along with us as we chat with this pleasant, industrious and super creative cake artist, Grace Onyeche Edache. You're welcome back. You're still watching Baker's World on MTV. Today I have with me a very talented and gifted entrepreneur. Welcome to Baker's World. Thank you very much for having me. You went to school to study, of course. Now, you always thought, okay, that's what you're going to become. Now, what inspired your decision to become a professional baker today? I've always loved baking. I was inspired by roommates back then in university. She would bake in the hostel. I would help her do stuff. When I left the hostel, I stayed with the family who took care of me in just, and their mom used to bake. I will watch her and just somehow I got interested in baking. And then when I finished the university, the idle time I had while waiting for its service, I decided to enroll in a class. I had that I had that training, the early training, before I went on to start my job with first time. When I started the job and baking will not give me breathing space. I would always bake, bake for colleagues, bake for friends, bake for family, and everybody was impressed. And at the time, baking was beginning to compete with banking and I had to pick one. And I knew that baking had a higher passion for me. I know that um, every client are different, you know. Some client, they come to you and they say, Oh, Grace, you know, I want you to make this for me. I saw a picture of this and that's exactly what I want you to make for me. But there are some that will say, you know, Grace, I trust you. You know, you just make me something. They, don't, they, they just trust you with the cake. They trust you with the design. Now, when you want to make um, a cake for such clients, how does it start? The first thing I do when I take a client's order, I, I talk about the personality of the person. I would ask, okay, I'm baking a cake for a 70-year-old mother. And then I'll ask them, how is she? Is she lively? But what does she like? And then those little things they tell me about my clients, I would somehow artistically express them in the cakes I do. I try to play safe when it's elderly people. I try to, I know, oh, the person is elderly, the person might not be a sweet tooth. Some of them don't like, like um, red velvet. They say, oh, it's too bright. So we we'll work with choices like the carrot cake, something that is on the healthy side. Let's talk about bakers in Nigeria. I know a lot of uh, bakers are doing extremely well, but in your own opinion, 
what do you what more do you think um, Bakers in Nigeria can do, you know, to take the industry to the next level? Okay, I've um, had the opportunity to have both local and international teachers. I've seen their work, seen what we do, and we are doing amazingly well. But we need more people daring to do, being more creative. Don't be timid in your creative thoughts. I'm not saying jam colors together, but you know, don't stick to white alone. You want to, your heart tells you, okay, like I'll say, I want to work with Peach. Oh, what does Peach say? Uh, I see a person, I said, this person is an extra, but I won't use brown. I see what they do. They dare to do. They see everything and they see beauty in it. And so for, for my fellow bakers, people who are just upcoming, I'll say, be creative. Try to mold. You make mistakes, the more you do, you get better at it. Try to... Try your hands on, on new things. Follow people who you know are challenging and then do better. We have a lot of things at our disposal. And I don't see what they are doing out there that is different. Speaking about, you know, the creative designs, you're very good creating pieces. And I want to know, you're, you're making a cake um, that represents a baker's world. I know that, you know, baker's world is very, you know, very large, you know, so many tools. <laughs> to choose from. So I want to know how you're going to bring all the species together to now represent you know, the baker's world. For today's cake, I've decided to focus on the world of the baker. And the, the baker's world is, is large. Um, you have sites for pastries, you, do, you have those who do decor, sugar craft, even work with sugar, sponge sugar, create artistic um, elements using pastillage. So I've decided to just bring everything in my own little way to show what the data does. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation with Thank you. you. We are glad to have you guys around. That was our conversation with the CEO of Grace Oven Workshop, Grace Adapted. Now, before we get back to the kitchen to continue the preparation, we'll take Baker's Cake now. Baking tools for every beginner. It's like everyone bakes these days, with the diverse baking trends from banana cakes, butterscotch cakes, bread, cookies, and the list is endless. You may even wonder how some realistic cakes are made. For you to enjoy baking and have it less cumbersome, you need a well-equipped kitchen, as successful baking requires more than just flour and oven. As with all the jobs, you need the right tools to achieve a delightful baking experience at any time. Here is a list of baking tools every beginner needs to start up. Mixing bowl For mixing your dry and wet ingredients. Mixer Useful creamy butter and sugar. It is also used for whipping your frosting, measuring cups and spoons. To treat your recipe as a formula. Knives. These are indispensable for cutting your cakes. A spatula. Used for scrapping bowls, stirring butter and spreading frosting on your cakes. Rolling pin. This is used for rolling out your dough. Sieve. This can be used to remove dirt and to incorporate air into your flour. Baking pans and sheets. These are in different sizes and shapes. Used for putting your butter or dough in the oven. Cooling grids. Used to display your baked products after baking to cool. As a beginner, these basic tools and more can help you achieve fun-filled and excellent baking with less stress. To cover our start with the top, I'll see the top and then we'll work on the slide and then handle it.
that does the same. What I'm doing, I'm feeling the egg. Then the, whatever excess is left out, it's too good. So we are about to decorate our cake using the fondant we just made. We are making a baker's world team cake. So just follow me. making the chef jacket and making the cup. So we just have to make it. Just cover to and left So I'm just giving it a fine finish now. To begin to form the outlines of the upper part of the chef's hat.
We are done with this. The next year we would raise on top now. Okay, not to it. I need to stick my big hat on. Bigger, bigger, have a wish, we have a new thing. Palette knife, and I have a spatula. I want to start with the rolling pin. It's really gorgeous, very beautiful. This is a true masterpiece indeed. You've done a really good job here. Well done, well done, congratulations. And you see, this is a representation of what a baker's world is like. Lots of tools here and some of the baker's um, products, you can see a donut with a chocolate glaze and even some of the tools, a rolling pin, um, a whisk, and so many other things on this. This cake is a true masterpiece. It's really, really just gorgeous. And you know, just to show you how much, how much she really represented some of the tools. A while back, while she was attaching some of the decorating pieces, she mistakenly used a palette knife that she had designed with sugar paste and mistaken it as the real palette. That's how much. She really represented the tools. It's really, really gorgeous. Trust you've learned a thing or two from our baker's creativity. Well, that's our package for you today on the show. So we'll come your way next week with a more interesting episode of Baker's World. For comments, feedbacks, and questions, you can reach us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. It's Baker's World on 98. I am Funke Oyeyele. See you next week.